Let's jump into the WNBA. Ooh. I'm sorry, the Caitlin Clark no. BA. Stop it. The CC, the, the, the newly renamed CCBA for the Caitlin Clark Basketball Association. <clears throat> Most recently, yep. Angel Reese went on a little diatribe talking about how she'll go back in 20 years and she'll say the reason that we're watching women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too. I want y'all to realize that. She think- said this in, in a lengthy interview. So I ask you this, Nick. When you are great, do you need to talk about your – well, you do, but when, when you, do you need to talk about your greatness or do other people talk about your greatness? There are, that's why Pete, there are so many people that don't like LeBron, LeBron James. It's because he's always pandering and begging to be recognized. You get recognized when you don't ask to be recognized. What are your thoughts? Man, I, I don't have a problem with it, man. And and her comments wasn't specifically how you said it. At first, it sounded like you just go back and, and see what they posted. It sounded like she was just talking about herself. But she brought it back in. She wheeled it back in. She was like, she kind of made it inclusive about more. I mean, than, I watched the whole interview. So she made ahead. it seem more than just her, you know. But at the end of the, end of the day, the WNBA, they're getting what they want. They're getting that attention now. And I told you before that it had to sort of be like a reality TV. And that's what they're, start, they're starting to give us. And we're paying attention. We're all tuned in. They're getting more attention than they ever gotten before. And a part of it is Angel Reese. We cannot deny that. She was a part of it. Is she the part of it? No, that's always, that's Caitlin. Caitlin is the person who's the main factor. She's the top of the show. She's what everybody came to see. So, you know, just like on The Temptation, they're like, nobody came to see you, Otis. Nobody ain't come to see you, Otis. Everybody came to see Caitlin Clark. And the rest of them are Otis, man. But they could be, they could be beneficiary of, of, of Caitlin Clark bringing eyes to the league. You know, she come, when she bring the eyes to the league, all you have to do is ball. Once you ball, now Rudy watches you, and Rudy say, hey, you're not so bad, even though he's the toughest cookie to, to tell you that you're not so bad as a woman in that league because they miss a lot of layups. Oh, my gosh. It's, I know we say this every time we get on this show. We talk about the missed layups and, and some of these – like, I watched that game, the Fever versus uh, Chicago, and after the first quarter, I was just – sad of watching it it was even with caitlin clark on the court because she came out and she had her first two shots and after that she went stone cold cold the rest of the game they ended up winning the game but it was brutal to watch i know a lot of people got hyped from the intensity i'll I, i'll give them that they're they're playing their asses off they're fighting and that's what they're gonna have to bring to the league like if it's not gonna be just a talent because you know uh it's just it is what it is, man. We're not. I'm not gonna get mad at it no more. It's just what it is. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna accept missed layups. I'm gonna accept bad three point shots um, that don't come close to the rim. Sometimes I gotta accept that. It's just it's what they can do. But the intensity that they play with, the fight that they they want to win, I I love to see it. I don't want them to be all out there babying Caitlin Clark. I don't want to see that. I want to see them go against her and compete against her now. When you do the ill advised shit like like Kennedy did or whatever her name is, um, but you come and chuck the player after the play when she's not even in it. Now, if you're doing it and y'all going mano a mano face to face and you hit her and you catch her with one, I, I'm okay with it. I caught a couple people with an elbow coming face to face in my lifetime also on the court. You know, you come in my area, you might get a quick one. I come around, swing the ball around. But when you just do it after the play, that looked like jealousy. I don't care what nobody's saying. She, that's, and then after the game, you say all she, you just relegate her to all she could do is just shoot threes. That's jealousy because she can do a lot more than that. So when you just say that, I know that you're hating. It's okay, and I'm and I'm fine with it because at the end of the day, let's get back to the question. They're bringing eyes to the league, and that's what they wanted. So I'm not. I don't have a problem with what with, with, with Angel said. I have no problem with it. She's part of it. She's not the part, but she is a part of it. So do you, a, and, do you have a do you have a problem when LeBron James is begging people to say he's the greatest ever? He, I don't say I don't think he's begging. He's just 
Oh, Oops. he oh he panders. He's pa- oh, come on, he, come on. He just wants you to know that he's the greatest player ever. You know, did he's Michael the- Jordan ever say I'm the greatest ever? But Jordan played in a different time when it was newspapers and outlets. But now does he now, say it now? You have the camera in your face all day. That's I, I'm pretty sure Jordan would say it now. If publicly, had, huh? Publicly, I, I, he'll yes. Uh, Jordan, he didn't even he didn't even say it in the Last Dance. So Jordan talked shit about everybody else. Come on. <clears throat> Jordan literally make up scenarios in his head to to go and compete and, and, and challenge other people. It was it was a story with him and Will Chamberlain going about who's the greatest player ever. There's a story. Jordan proclaimed that he's great. He he does it not not do it. He does it also. I'm talking about you're begging for people to recognize you, and because you feel slighted, you have to tell people it was well, not just them. Well, realistically, is Angel Reese even on the even remotely close to the level of Asia Wilson? No. No. Would you watch an Angel Reese game or would you watch an Asia Wilson game first? I would watch Asia, Asia Wilson. Why? Because she's better. She can play. She's she, be- wait, wait, wait. You would watch Angel Reese? You just said she's better. No, Asia. Asia. Oh, oh, I'm about to say. I'm, yeah, you'd watch Asia Wilson play because she's actually really freaking good. Yeah, but. But Angel Reese is not really freaking good. She, and She's okay. She's, no, she just need, she needs to get better offensively. <clears throat> She does everything else well. She offers a rebound her own shots pretty good. But uh... <laughs> well, well, here's the thing I say. Do you ever hear Cameron Brink say it's about me too? How about Aaliyah Edwards who just dropped 23 on Angel tonight, going for 10 for 12 and 14 boards? Reese finished with 16 and 11, but she shot 5 of 17. Guarantee you the Reese Nation won't be mentioning that 5 of 17, though. They'll say she had 16 and 11. But if yeah. Caitlin Clark goes 5 for 17 and goes 11, 10, Eight, four, and one. It's that Caitlin Clark stunk, and I've never heard. I've never heard Caitlin Clark in interviews say, "Look at me, I'm the reason." Even though she could and she should, you might like it. Maybe if she showed that type of off court and arrogance that Reese carries, maybe the folks who seem to carry the Reese banner and torch, the torch, might like Caitlin Clark too. Maybe there's not. I don't know. Arrogance. There's a lot of players that play with arrogance, but arrogance on the floor is not arrogance off the floor. Clark is interviewed literally every day, and in every interview, that's com- it's combed with a fine tooth comb looking for a soundbite. You haven't gotten any. She's boring. She's boring. Can you imagine that you're boring, and people still want to watch you play? Bored as hell. She's boring. Like she is. She is Iowa boring. Yes. She don't give you anything. Lily White, Tom Brady like interviews says nothing, Even gives though. you nothing, and no. yet Belichick. What? Belichick. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Bill Belichick interviews, says nothing, gives you nothing, and yet you still are buying tickets. I mean, I'm not. You're and, not. But and, people are all over the country and watching these games for a woman who is bland. And, and, and bland No is seasoning. Hell. No seasoning. <laughs> no seasoning. Not even salt and pepper. Not even salt and pepper. And, I, and there's people that's out there that saying, oh, it's because she, you know, black. Mm. Oh, because she's white. That's why she's getting No. Sabrina Ionescu and and, and so, uh, uh, Stewart, Brianna Stewart, Stewart and Kelsey Plum and all oh, the white girls before her. They did not bring this type of energy in the fans to this league like she does. No, it's because how she plays. It's because what she does. It's because she can shoot the ball from 30 feet deep off the dribble, fading left. Like, that's what we like to see. It's electric. It's a different than anything else that we see from Miss Underhand Layups. This underhand layups that's bothering me, like not even overhand slapping the glass or anything like that. So the what she brings is different, and that's why we're like it's like a magnet. We're attracted to. We're like she's bringing us closer every day, every step by step. We have to see what's going on because it's 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 amazing to see what she's done. So it's not a race thing. It's definitely not a race thing. So let's kick that part out. Black. You're about to you're about to get crucified for that, man. Black community is not a race thing. She can <laughs> hoop because we all are down. It. A lot of other people cannot hoop the way she does. That it's going to bring our eyes and attention to it. She can pass the ball with the best of them. She has great floor vision. She makes passes down the court. She has the needle. She does all those things. So that's why. So black community, I'm sorry, that's not why we're tuned into. She's freaking good in how she brings it on the court. 
is different than any other player in the league. Because if that was the case, they would be watching those other white girls that's out there who didn't bring the attention that she brought. Or they've been in the league three, four, five years. She just got there, and everything has changed since she got there. The other rookies, they are bringing good things to the league too, because of their social media presence and you know, and and what Angel Reese is doing. Because at first she didn't want to be the bad guy, then she wanted to be the bad. Oh, guy. Then she wants now she wants to be now the villain again. The bad guy again. And I'm like. Well, I think when I said it before, I remember when she said it after the, they lost the game. I said, Rudy, man, take on the bad guy role. Love it. Don't come out and cry about it because, you know, after you lose, no, embrace that shit, man. Come back out there, bully your way through the court, bully the league, and be the bad girl. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna jump on your bandwagon for it. We love it. Like, if you're going to stick to it, stick to your truth. And we're going to rock with it. That's who you are. We're going to rock with it. You're going to keep getting the fans to watch. And you just be the bad guy. But shit, the bad guy wins sometimes. Shit. Even you know Joker, what drives, what, what's Joker. driving me crazy? The Joker? I mean, you know what wins? What drives me crazy about the situation is, like, she's telling us in this interview, this is the same interview, about how they're selling out arenas. They have not sold out any arenas. That's a lie. It's a lie. I've looked at the stats. I've looked at the data. They played tonight in Washington. Washington usually plays in a Band-Aid box that seats 4,000. They move the game to where the Wizards play because of Reese, naturally, as they should. That place seats 21,000. You know how many empty seats there were? 11,000? Yeah, you got to get a thousand. Like, they, got, oh, the, the, they had the, they curtain the upper deck. If they, like, got in the, if they got in about 15K, I'd have been like, okay. You, okay. you know, you're still – and, and – and this that's, is that's what, that's but you know, the, you know, oh, I'm sorry. So she's, she, but she's telling us about the sold out arenas, yet she hasn't played in front of one sold out arena. Oh, my, my bad. She played in front of one. It was in Indiana. Yeah, of course. Where's Caitlin Clark? She can't sell out, like, she can't sell out her own home arena. It's a band aid box in Chicago. It seats 10,000 people. They haven't put more than 8,200 in there in any game yet this season. This is Chicago. Why doesn't Chicago have them playing in the United Center? Because they know the place will be half empty. They know they can't sell it out. But she's so damn good in her own mind, and she's convinced herself that she's so great, yet she can't sell out these arenas. Caitlin Clark's been to Seattle, 18,000 plus. L.A., she sold more tickets than LeBron James did this year in a home game in L.A. Well, a road game for her. But the, the Sparks had a higher attendance this year with Caitlin Clark than the Lakers did all season. You know, she goes to, to uh, shoot, it was Seattle, it was uh, L.A., it was New York, 17,000 plus, both games. These teams otherwise average 8,000, 7,000, 9,000 people per game. Caitlin Clark on a horrendous team is selling out buildings with trash can janitors. I'm sorry, J.J. Reddick's favorite thing, plumbers, garbage men, and, and, and electricians playing next to her, who also watch her get bowed in the back and stand and look at it and don't go forearm check the girl that did it. There's one woman right now, I don't know if you, um, Angel McCautry. She's a former WNBA player, two-time MVP, uh, M, uh, oh, I'm sorry, WNBA, uh, two-time WNBA NBA MVP. She was interviewed recently. She says, I'll go play for Indiana and go be her, uh, her goon. Protect. Her henchmen protect yeah. her because th what, what the Indiana Fever players are allowing to happen is embarrassing. They're letting other people take shots at their best player and watching, and so, they're never getting retribution. They're, I mean, the fact that Aaliyah Boston was seven feet away and her mouth goes, oh, and then goes to pick her up. Why weren't you going after Kennedy Carter? So, and then I heard Monica, Monica McNutt on Monday say, oh, she might lose a game check. Okay, that's, that's what I was going to get. Bro, did you see what happened with Angel Reese when she just got ejected the other day? What happened? I mean, we're clearly having massive salary cap violations because Lonzo Ball gets up and says, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, Rudy, but, they, don't, but you, they don't have to come and fight her. But, but you don't have to get ejected. You can just shove her off, you know? Yeah, just show her like, hey. Yeah, you don't have to get ejected for it. The way you say it, come over there, punch her or jump Exactly. 
All you got to do is come over there, bumper, just like, what's, what's the little girl named out of uh, LSU? Haley Van Lip, who he, went after Camila Cardoso. Yes. And, and she's 5'6", and Cardoso's 6'7". So even, even, she went after her. Even something like that just shows me that you got my back. Like, you don't have to come out there and get oh, it. The game, the game is back to 19. It was down to 8. It was back yeah. it was, It's back to 19, just like that. <laughs> I just with, three, with three minutes, it was 72-64. Just a block on uh, Kyrie Irving. And 11-0 since then. That's crazy. But yeah. yeah, Haley Van Lift goes after a woman three double her size, and Aaliyah Boston is six four, six five, and standing there and lets this girl who's five nine body check her teammate. Come on, I I I I'm so irritated watching this shit. Matt Barnes was a thousand percent right. A thousand percent right. Where are these ladies? You better go sign somebody who's willing to sacrifice and go after somebody because we know Caitlin Clark. Won't get up and sock somebody. It won't oh. happen. So, and then they compared to Candace Parker. Well, Candace Parker, when What's she it? was getting pushed around, you know what she did? She started a fight. Yeah. And she damn started six, a fight. And she's 6'3, yeah. 200 pounds. It, it, you know, but it's crazy to me because otherwise, Andrew Reese is playing in half empty arenas. Washington plays in a 3,500 seat arena. Dallas plays in a 7,000 seat arena. Atlanta plays in a 4,000 seat arena. They're playing in Division Two buildings. So, so and, and at the end of the day, they should be grateful. Like even even there's no such thing as bad publicity. As long as we're talking about it, that's a good thing. Whether it's bad, whether it's good, like they're getting all the attention to them now. Like they're leading off ESPN shows. To start. Yeah, because of Caitlin Clark, we know. So they're leading shows off now. They're getting the attention, but guess what, Rudy? Do you know anything that happened? Like, have you paid attention to any games really since they played on Sunday versus? Of course not. I was I was going to bring that up to you. Did they anybody... haven't played since Sunday, and no one's talked about the league since. Because of the hip, only thing they talked about is the hip check. Exactly. So, or whatever that was, the shoving. It was back. it was like a forearm into her ribs, forearm. and yeah. so I haven't. I don't know what's going on since then. So y'all better keep that needle mover, moving that damn needle. In they day. play the mist. They play the Mystics tomorrow in Washington. You know that'll be in the Wizards building. Yeah. Let's check out the attendance tomorrow. So, so another thing that happened was we talked about it. It was was the scheduling kind. Of, the WNBA kind of screw her with the schedule. Yeah, they're all ca- they're all catching up now. <laughs> yeah, now, but we said yeah, they did because they played so many games that. When nobody else played those games, they played like eleven games in like twenty days. Nobody else yep. did two to three to five games within that stretch. Mm-hmm. And we said, "Yeah, that's crazy." Because the girl just came out of college a month and a half ago. She had no rest. She just played forty games in college. She was a star over there, and then she just literally came back into another league with limited practice time, and she was playing games. It's not about Soften, soften the schedule for us. Just being smart about your best product on the court, with limited the risk of her getting hurt. Not even the other things that come with it. It's her getting hurt because she hasn't had any time to rest or to get her body back right. So if she get hurt, who's watching the WNBA again? Like <laughs> not me. I was. I wasn't saying that they need to make it. Take it easy on her in that scenario, you know, competition. Of course I'm not. Saying, we never said that. The WNBA should have been smarter, but I understand why they pushed so much games because they wanted to get their best product out early. But I also understand if that best product get hurt because they just finished the season in 40 games and she went to a deep run into the finals because she carried her team and she got drafted a week later and then she was in camp and playing a game a month and a half later. Like, and then they're playing games every day without any practice or recovery time. Guys, that's injuries that could happen real quickly. And now y'all are back to ground zero. And who's watching? So it no, wasn't about, it wasn't about being soft for her or her playing soft people or, or not soft people, but easier teams early on. No, it was just about how many games they play compared to anybody else. They're like, well, do you look at any other rookie from – 10, 15 years ago, I said, no, that, that has nothing to do with that. You have to look at the circumstances to understand the circumstances of the magnitude of, the, of what she is and what she's bringing to the league and how do you protect that? Because if yeah. she falls, if she falters, everything falters around her. So I, I until, she, 
she keeps doing what she's doing, and everybody else starts getting recognized because now we see that other players are good. And now you can start promoting other players the way you do with her. Until then, you have to protect her at all costs. Until your game reaches a level where y'all can be okay without her being the front page every time. And shout out to her new teammate next year, man. She's going to have Paige on her team next year, her, Paige. They're gonna be, that's going to be a squad. Now, now that would be uh, – well, that would require them losing more and letting Washington win tomorrow because uh, Washington has, was number one pick next year at this point. They are 2-9 and nine and Washington's 0-10. Oh so that, that should be a great matchup tomorrow in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> in front of, in front, imagine if an NBA game had a two and nine versus an zero and ten team. How many people do you think would be at that game? It's other team zero and ten. Huh? What? Yeah, two and nine versus zero and ten. How many people would be at that game? I don't mean ticket sales. I just mean be in the building because they sell almost all tickets for NBA games. The Heat are sold out for the season. So, but for some teams, they don't sell out the season. Yeah. But they're still selling. 17, 18,000 tickets. But who, because I would suggest, I would think that maybe 6,000, 8,000 people will be getting tickets for a dollar, like Marlins games. Because um, I tell you what, there was a picture that I don't know if I sent you the photo yesterday or not, but there was a photo of the Sparks game yesterday <laughs> with the reported 8,200 people there. <laughs> there might have been 2,500 with the fan, with the staff, the police, the players. The employees, yeah. um, the people in the concession stand, because that Crypto.com arena was completely freaking empty. Empty with a capital E. <laughs> empty. Protect your man. Protect it. Do whatever you got to do to protect it. Um, <clears throat> schedule All right. Day. Please do something better. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell. So you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.